Today, I'm going to talk to you about cross NMA. It's a new R package to synthesize the cross design evidence and the cross format data using Bayesian network meta analysis. So, standard network meta analysis synthesized aggregate data from randomized clinical trials because it is easily accessible from the published literature. However, heterogeneity may be present across these trials, and we include participant covariates or effect modifiers as aggregate information to explain some of this heterogeneity. Including mean covariates could, uh, however, induce uh, aggregation bias. So ideally we would like to have, uh, or to include the covariates on the individual level from every study. But more typically we only have uh, IBD from a subset of studies and then aggregated uh, data from the rest. In terms of study design, most NMAs include uh, only clinical trials in the analysis because they are uh, typically uh, uh, at a lower risk of bias. But on the other hand, they are uh, conducted for restricted set of population, and this makes the results hard to be generalized to the general population. On the other hand, the non-randomized studies or observational studies reflects better the reality, but it comes with high risk of bias. We might, we might need in some situation though to combine these types of evidence while taking into account the biases on each design. And this is what the Chris NMA model is doing. It's a recent ex extension of the NMA model to synthesize mixture of data formats, IBD and aggregate data, and different study designs. We built the cross NMA model by integrating these uh, four different approaches, which combine clinical and observational data into the three-level hierarchical model that synthesize IBD and aggregate data. How does the three-level hierarchical model work? First of all, we define an individual level uh, regression model to include uh, participant covariates. Here, beta zero captures the prognostic effect. Beta W is the within study treatment covariate interaction, and beta B quantifies the interaction between the relative treatment effect and the, co and the mean covariate uh, value on study level. And then for aggregate studies, we have access only to mean covariates, so we can uh, only estimate the, beta, uh, estimate the coefficient beta B. Then we combine the evidence across IBD and AD for relative treatment effect, uh, delta and covariate coefficient beta B, while beta W is uh, combined only from IBD studies. Now, how do we integrate the four approaches to combine clinical and observational data into this three-level hierarchical model? So the simplest approach is to not differentiate between the two types and fit individual regression model for both clinical and observational studies and do the same for the aggregate studies. But we know that each type has different life uh, level of bias and uh, this model doesn't account for this bias. And this brings me to our second model, which adjusts the relative treatment effects to the bias on each study. For, in, for individual model and aggregate model, we add this highlighted part, the bias effect of each study, gamma multiplied by uh, the bias indicator of that study R. The bias indicator R takes values uh, zero or one based on the, assess the assessment using the risk of bias tools. However, we know that the judgment using these tools is subjective and carry many uncertainty uh, and carry many uncertainty and we reflect this uncertainty by assigning a Bernoulli distribution to the bias indicator, which will provide zero or one uh, to R. But now, and for to estimate the probability of bias on each study, we either assign a beta distribution, low risk of bias studies are given a distribution skewed toward zero, and high risk of bias studies skewed toward one. Or we could estimate 
uh, the bias probability using study characteristics uh, through, a, uh, through this logistic model. There is another way to reflect study bias by directly modeling uh, the bias adjusted relative treatment effects uh, theta, which is estimated by a weighted average of unadjusted effect delta and the bias adjusted effect delta plus gamma. In bias adjustment model one, in the slide before, this theta is either the unadjusted effect for low risk of bias studies or is a bias adjusted, bias adjusted effect for high bias studies and not both of them. But here we allow theta to be weighted average of uh, both parts. But for low risk of bias studies, we give a greater weight to unadjusted and a little weight to bias adjusted part and vice versa for studies at high risk of bias. The last approach in combining clinical and observational data is using observational information as a prior to model the clinical evidence. It is a two-step approach. First step is to conduct network meta-analysis only for observational data using individual aggregated data or mixture of both. In Bayesian framework, we will get a posterior distribution of each relative treatment effect. Second step is to conduct network meta-analysis for clinical data. But as a prior, we use the posteriors we get from the observational data. Now, some people could argue that usually observational data has a greater sample size compared to clinical trials, and this makes the observational information dominate the estimate. So to control this potential high influence of observational studies, we downweight the contribution from these studies by increasing the variance uh, from uh, the posterior hairs or make these distributions further. These models are implemented in the CRUSANAME package, which is a suite of uh, tools uh, for performing network meta-analysis and meta-regression with individual participant data, aggregate data, or mixes of both. And each format can come from clinical trials or observational studies or mix of both. Behind the scenes, models are estimated in a Bayesian framework using Jackson R, the package allows for conducting standard network meta-analysis when we have aggregate data from RCTs. It allows the inclusion of IBD of these RCTs. And it also uh, enables uh, each format to include observational studies. So a workflow in Cruzan MA model is as follow. First of all, you start with your data sets, participant data and aggregate data, or only a single data of one of them. They should be both of them in a long format, which means one row per arm, per aggregate study, or per participant in IBT. We then call the Chris Anime model function to construct a JAX model and uh, reformat the data. We might visualize the network. And then we run the analysis using the cross nma.run function. And once uh, the model is fitted, we then uh, can produce summary of results, leak table, or uh, check the convergence. So let's apply this uh, to an example. First of all, we have uh, some individual participant data at the top here. So one row per uh, each individual. And you can see that we have in this example, a binary outcome. And then we have aggregate data below this, one row per each arm study with their outcome and covariance. On each data set, you need to have at least uh, these highlighted columns, study ID, ID outcome, the assigned the treatment, and the design of the study, clinical or observational. And for aggregate data, you need additionally to provide uh, the sample size column in. Combining these together in a cruz NMA model, first of all, you need to indicate the name of your individual participant data and aggregate data. 
you need then to indicate columns name of these variables. And you then choose which model to be used to combine treatment effects across studies, either random or common effects model. You set the reference treatment. Uh, in this example, relative treatment effects will be evaluated uh, versus A. And finally, you indicate which approach you would use to combine observational and clinical data. Here goes one of these four approaches that I talked uh, about before. To conduct network meta-analysis, uh, meta-regression, you could set a covariate. Here we use age to adjust uh, all relative treatment effects. And also you could adjust the relative treatment effects to study bias using bias adjustment uh, model one. And here there are too many um, arguments need to be set as well. All uh, will be described uh, in the help file and the vignette. You can also plot the network using uh, the netplot function. You could pass to this function different arguments to control the colors, the thickness, and many other features, which are very similar to uh, the net graph function from net, uh, net, meta, uh, net meta package. And then you can go away and fit the model using a cross NMA dot run function. It takes the model we created using uh, the cross NMA dot model, and uh, you need to set the settings for MCMC samples, iteration, burn in, and etc. Once we fitted the model, I can then print, uh, print a summary of the results. So here it's showing us the mean, standard deviation, et cetera, for each of the parameters. We have here the regression parameter P, the relative treatment effects D, and the bias effect plus the two heterogeneity parameters. Also to provide the convergence information the gilman uh, robin statistic, and the number of effective sample size. You could also produce the trace plot to check convergence of each parameter. And finally, you can, you can create the leak table by cross animated uh, leak function. So here the values in each cell uh, shows the relative treatment effects and the 95% credible interval of each treatment on top compared to the treatment on the left. So I really just gave a brief summary today. If you would like to find out more and uh, you can check uh, out our package on, uh, on GitHub website, soon we will submit this package to CRAN with the illustrator documentation and detailed example. We also soon uh, submit our methods paper. Thank you very much.